iOS 13 keyboard that doesn't work, well, I don't want to turn this into a rant or criticize when there are things to praise, I do just that, and there are many things that Apple does right. But when things don't work, I'm here to point it out and to fix what's possible to fix. There are three areas which suck when it comes to iOS 13 keyboard, now let's begin. And the first thing which I don't like about it is that spell check doesn't work. When you turn this on, of course, you need to have that enabled at first. I don't mean this predictive feature which uh, appears on top of the keyboard, nor the autocorrect. Just imagine you're texting someone and see this. You have underlined words uh, that are obviously misspelled. So tapping the incorrectly spelled words gives you different options every time you click on it. Like it's so annoying to get the, the option to give you the suggestions for the words that you don't even know what to do. You just keep tapping on it. You have to go like three times until something eventually appears on the screen. And this, if that's not apparent enough, really sucks if you're texting someone or doing whatever else. And yes, I'm running the latest iOS 13.4.1, the latest official iOS version available at the moment. Honestly, it would be so much faster just coming back to the word manually with a cursor and just deleting the word, retyping it correctly again, and then using this weird spell check function that we have in iOS 13. And it doesn't matter where exactly you are at the moment. I mean, if you're using notes or messages or pretty much anywhere else where you use the stock keyboard from iOS, which usually is very good. And I don't recommend you a lot of times to switch to any third party keyboard. But when it comes to this, if they got it fixed, I mean, it would be OK. But right now it just kind of sucks, I guess. By the way, if you are new on the Apple Fox, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next videos in the future. I already work on a video where you get like the keyboard shortcuts and stuff where you can like pinch with three fingers to paste text and stuff. So in order not to miss it, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell. And you can also help other people by clicking on the like button. That way this video goes up on YouTube and more people can actually see it and see their options they have with the keyboard and what works and what doesn't work. But now let's continue with the video. Okay, so what can you do about it right now? Uh, not much at the moment, I would say. Uh, I would advise you to wait for the next iOS update, maybe even wait for uh, iOS 14. Uh, the WWDC 2020 has just been announced. It's coming close, so maybe you can wait for uh, that, but also you can switch from spell check to autocorrect. But you need to deal with the mistakes that it does. I mean, of course, it does a great job when it comes to correcting your words, and it's a lot faster than this not working spell check. The next option you have is also to switch to a third party keyboard, which is a good idea, but you have to like count with this that it doesn't have the good stuff from iOS keyboard, but yeah, you will probably never get the perfect one with all of the features you want. And a lot of times the stock iOS keyboards does most of the things that people want a keyboard to do, so that's why it's so popular and not many people actually switch to a third party one. The next thing you can do is to move the cursor to the end of the word. And now these suggestions, the word suggestions should pop up on top of the word, which makes it a little bit faster. Okay, but looking aside from the spell check, the next thing I don't get why they removed is the magnifying glass that you used to have on the keyboard. Like, you know, when you grab the cursor, you have this little window, this little circle, which magnifies and enlarges the text. So you know exactly where to put the cursor. It's very useful or it used to be in my opinion. And I don't just get it why Apple removed it. I know there are other supposedly new ways of moving the cursor around the text. Apple added the option to just grab it. It gets larger, of course, and to move it around. Your finger doesn't stand in the way and it doesn't block the view, which is nice, but I would still prefer the magnifying glass. At least give us the option, Apple, like it's already implemented to the iOS for a couple of years, so I don't see why you shouldn't give us the option to do so, I guess, but yeah, I think we'll have to deal with this. 
In case you really want to get the zoomed in look when you're moving the cursor around, you can use the three fingers double tap to zoom in and to move around this way. I guess that would work. But what you can also do is to move around with the spacebar. This also works, but it doesn't work the well without the 3D touch. And we're getting to the last point and the last area, which sucks in my personal opinion. And it's apparently the 3D touch. Yes, the keyboard is another area where I miss this great feature. I feel like I always manage to link somehow not having 3D touch to the topic of the video. But anyways, now that you can only hold down to the space bar and move it around, it is so much slower when you compare it to 3D touch devices. And you can only do it from the space bar. We are talking about this feature when you hold down to, to the space and you can move the cursor around. And on 3D touch compatible devices, you can use any key you would want. So no matter if you use it in the middle of the keyboard or anywhere else, you can do it. Not only faster, but also from any area of the keyboard because there is a difference between long and firm press on 3D touch devices. That is apparent. Now you cannot use it because long press also means that you get additional characters on top of the key that you hold down to, so it cannot do the same thing. And on spacebar, you don't really get a lot. If you are thinking about some third-party alternatives for your iOS keyboard, I would suggest taking a look at the Gboard from Google. That one is pretty good, except for a couple of bugs that people had. But nonetheless, it's a great and solid keyboard app. The next one you can take a look at is called SwiftKey, and I know that you probably heard of this one before. I want to say that uh, this was mostly unique because of this swiping on the keyboard in order to type, but this feature has been brought over to iOS keyboard, and I don't really think that SwiftKey is that useful anymore, but these are the most popular alternatives to iOS keyboard. So just take a look at it and perhaps let me know in the comments if you have like one of your best ones that you use currently. I'm really thrilled to, to see that and to try it out on my own. But now we're getting to the end of this video. In case you have any other thoughts on your mind, what you can do just like all the time is to let me know down below in the comments. What you can also do is to support me on Instagram by following and perhaps EM. I don't get that many questions at the moment right now, so chances are I will get back to you pretty soon. Now, thank you so much for watching. Hope you hope you're staying safe during this time and I'll see you guys later in the next videos. Peace out, guys.